Thank you, Nick. Well, this week marks 99 years since the Heron Massacre. The event carved a mark here locally and made national headlines. Brooke Slyer is live with the details now. Brooke. Yeah, good morning, Evie. This morning we are talking about not only the Heron Massacre and that event, but also the aftermath of that event as well. And joining me this morning is local historian Scott Duty. And so, Scott, right now we are actually not in Heron. We are in Marion in the Pavilion parking lot. This might be a familiar landmark to locals here. So what's the significance of this location to the Heron Massacre? This location? Behind us, over our shoulder, about 300 yards, was the Lester Strip pit where all the action got started, so to speak, on June 22nd, uh, almost 100 years ago, 99 years ago. So it's a nice morning for you and I, but 100 years ago, not so much. So we're 300 yards from where all the action got started, and the Lester Strip Pit's still here today. And before we get into the actual events of the massacre, one thing that I wanted to talk about was just about the coal industry at that time and really the impact that it had not only on our region, but the country itself and kind of how that played a role in the events leading up to the massacre. 650,000 men went on strike in 1922 across the country, United Mine Workers of America. The United Mine Workers are like Jimmy Hoffa and the Teamsters on steroids. So... 650,000 people all across the country. It's the largest strike in American history. It went on for months. Illinois' chapter of the UMWA went on strike in April of 22. Coal was important because when those men went on strike, the entire country basically shut down. Steam locomotives ran on coal. Electricity was generated by coal. You heated your homes with coal. Coal was Coal was what gasoline is today. The pipeline shut down a month ago. The hack, East Coast, shuts the whole East Coast down. The whole country was shut down. 650,000 people quit for higher wages. And I'll tell you a quick story. My great-grandfather mined coal in West Frankfurt after he got out of World War I in 1925. Had a cave in. Took a few hours to get him out. It was a very, very dangerous job. So his wife raised so much cane, our family moved to Jonesboro, Illinois, a half hour south of here. My grandfather used to tell the story that when, when they would go up and visit kinfolk on the weekends, they had running water, electricity, lamps, t uh, radios, and record players, and new cars. Coal was everything to people in southern Illinois because it let blue-collar people make a great living. And my great-grandfather worked for the county highway department in Jonesboro. My grandpa would say, I always hated to leave because we came back to poor folks in Jonesboro. So coal was everything in southern Illinois in 22. Well, we're talking a little bit more about just, you know, the work conditions and, of course, you know, what led up to the Harry Massacre and the event itself coming up later on the show. But for now, back to you in the studio. Thank you for that, Brooke. Well, a local civil rights group is investigating allegations.